Uh, good evening. Uh, my name again is Stan Moulton. I'm the chair of the Charter Review Committee. This is a public forum uh, that is being taped by Northampton Open Media. This is not a live broadcast, uh, and it will be available uh, starting Thursday. Uh, if anybody who's, you know who wants to see it who's not here, um, it'll be uh, um, available Thursday onward. Um, our first order of business tonight is to approve the minutes of the October 15th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that's unanimous. Uh, we're now going to uh, take public comment. Before we do, I just want to review uh, briefly what we're about here, what the Charter Review Committee is doing. The last time the Charter was revised in 2012, it established an automatic review every 10 years in the years ending in nine. And the review is done by a committee uh, representing, we, we have a representative from each ward, we have a representative from the City Council and from the Mayor's Office. Our report will be done by the end of the year and will be submitted to the, um, to the new city council that is seated next year uh, to consider all of the recommendations that we will uh, put forward. Uh, it's up to the council, ultimately the mayor, to move any of those recommendations that they wish to support ahead. A, uh, a special act would be filed in the state legislature that would require legislative approval and ultimately would go to the governor for approval. So it's a lengthy process, but this is the first and a very important step in that process. And I should also point out that there may be some things that we don't, some issues that we don't make specific recommendations on that we urge further study for. And those are, those are items that can come up at, at any time. There can be amendments to the charters uh, that are submitted um, at any time. It doesn't have to wait for the next formal review. Uh, tonight, uh, we've got a number of people who want to address us. Uh, please remember uh, what the charter is. It's like a constitution. It's a blueprint that sets forth the structure of our city government. This is not uh, the forum for lobbying for more money for the schools or for fixing potholes. There are other venues available for that. This is really about big picture uh, items that relate specifically to the Northampton Charter. Um, and I would ask if people could um, uh, limit their remarks to a minute and a half or a couple minutes and, and try to be as concise as, as possible. Uh, everyone, though, will, will get a chance to speak uh, who, who wants to. Before we start, I've asked Sam uh, Hopper, our vice chair, to um, briefly summarize the major recommendations that we've already voted. Thank you. Good evening. Um, we've taken over two dozen votes on this committee, um, but I'm going to go through some of the more major recommendations we have. Um, to start, we are recommending to make some changes to the Smith Agricultural Trustees or the Superintendents of Smith, um, adding them to the annual bu budget discussion that currently the City Council and the School Committee have a joint meeting. We're recommending adding Smith vote trustees to that as well, um, as well as filling vacancies in a like manner of School Committee where City Council and School um, Smith Vogue trustees will decide on how to fill a vacancy, um, which person to have. Um, we have also voted to recommend removing candidate for re-election on municipal ballots in an attempt to remove some of the obstacles uh, folks face when running for office. Um, we're, another major recommendation is changing the city clerk position from an elected position to an appointed position um, to professionalize the position a little bit more. Um, we made a lot of recommendations around elections, including recommending to lower the voting age in municipal elections to 16 years old, um, adopting ranked choice voting, um, and then mailing ballots to all voters, um, all registered voters in the city. 
Um, and then also having no excuse absentee voting, which means um, you don't, right now you have to qualify under a few different reasons to vote absentee. This would allow voters to just vote absentee if they want to. We also recommended that the independent audit that's done for the city um, is awarded in a three-year contract in an attempt to um, have one company be more comfortable with how the city works and hopefully be able to be more efficient with their work. And that's all I got. Thanks, Sam. Uh, okay, so now we'll start with public comment and for uh, purposes of uh, Northampton Open Media, if you would come and speak at the podium, that microphone will not amplify you in the room, but it will help with the with the taping. So just speak loudly, please. Thank you. Stan, you could pass them that microphone. He's, he's concerned about the that. feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mark Warner. Where is the? Hi, I'm Mark Warner. I served on the 2012 Charter Review Committee. We had a lot of fun. I hope you've had a good time as well. Thanks for your efforts. I want to speak on a couple of the initiatives that you've talked about. One, the, the lowering the voting age to 18, and the recent proposal to go and include non-citizens as voters here in municipal elections. My issues with this are not philosophical as much as they are sort of structural in the process of getting the charter changes enacted. When you come up with your recommendations, as you mentioned before, they will have to go forward both to the legislature, the governor, and get passed a referendum as well. There are different procedures either for a home rule petition, but whatever you do will have to pass those steps. And the current issues with regard to elections are the purview of the state legislature. It is not something that is done just through home rule petition. These are reserved for the state. So you would still have to do that, and in both of these issues, lowering the terms, lowering the voting age from 18, and allowing non-citizens to vote, even in municipal elections, is still something that the state does not allow. And there have been a couple, couple of proposals by other communities, but in every case, the state has rejected them. So I'd like to suggest that these measures here are premature or at best should be listed as topics for further study, rather than included as your recommendations for charter changes. Because when it ultimately comes down to it, you don't want the issues that are of higher priority, the dealing with the vacancies, the changing of the city's clerk, the ranked choice voting, which is allowed by the, which, which is not in itself, uh, has not in itself been disqualified by legislature automatically, whereas attempts to lower the voting age or non-citizen voting has. So don't seek to compromise, don't allow a potential undermining of these primary initiatives. These have shown them not, to, these have so far been not uh, subject of great opposition within the city, even the changing of the clerk from elected to appointed position. The current clerk, for instance, has endorsed it. It is extremely likely that opposition will not develop for any of the measures that you propose, other than perhaps the lowering the voting age to, to 16. And so it is likely that you will get passage when the charter changes come up for referendum by the city. But bring in lowering the election and most, and probably more significantly allowing non-citizens to vote and you will have that opposition. You will, it all bets are off that the referendum will pass in the city. So I suggest that while you have this opposition and the likelihood that these issues are gonna be moot when it comes to the, the getting the changes through the legislature, that you make these electoral changes issues of topics for further study rather than your package of recommendations for charter changes. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Alex, Alex Jarrett. Uh, Alex Jarrett, 8 High Street, Florence. Um, I am a candidate for Ward 5 City Council, and thank you for uh, a special invitation for, to hear from council candidates. Um, so in terms of election issues, I'm in favor of ranked choice voting. Um, and basically anything we can do to increase the voter participation, the mailing of ballots, the no excuse voting, removing the candidate for re-election um, will help in terms of helping you know, people to feel, uh, some, remove some of those barriers, um, supporting 16 year olds voting. Um, and I also in favor of uh, re basically that residents of a city should be permitted to vote in that city. 
Um, Non-citizens, whether they're documented or not, are part of the community. They attend schools, use the roads, partic um, participate in business, pay taxes. Uh, giving them a civic voice in local affairs uh, makes sense. Um, given our broken immigration system, it makes sense to take local action um, <clears throat> because we're not seeing that on a federal level. Um, I've heard some talk of uh, the danger that individuals may be uh, undertaking if they register to vote and are undocumented. Um, I think that each individual can make that decision, um, but the, the, the right to vote is something that we can, we can push for. And, um, it's important, you know, as Mark said, there's certainly, you know, the legislator, legislature may not have acted yet uh, and in positively on these, these issues, but when there becomes a groundswell of support for issues, then things can start to shift. And so if we make that recommendation, even if it is rejected, it's important uh, that, you know, that many, many municipalities move on that. Um, next, the city clerk switched to a, switching to be by to be appointment appointed. Um, so, assume your recommendation is to be appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council. Many other cities have uh, the city council appoint the uh, city clerk. So, Springfield, Cambridge, Marlboro, um, and so I think that you know the advantage is having nine elected people uh, appoint versus one elected person, um, the mayor. Uh, dilutes one person's undue influence on the elections, um, but it also, you know, it complicates the relationships of having more than one boss. So I would just encourage more research on this. In the minutes, I didn't really see uh, a full reasoning uh, as to why there might be one way or the other. Um, and then finally, there's been talk of uh, an information officer or ombudsperson. Um, in the letter that you are voting on to send to the mayor, you talk about uh, the Know Your City workshops, and so I wanted to speak in favor of that. Um, and, I, and in having those workshops be held at different times and places in the city so that people with varying schedules and transportation restrictions can attend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Diana? <coughs> Good evening, my name is Diana Sierra Becerra. I teach Latin American history at Smith College and I live in Northampton. I was undocumented from 1994 to 2012. I obtained citizenship two years ago. I feel that as someone with that experience, I know what it's like to live in a community or to live in a country that consistently disenfranchises you and prevents you from making decisions that directly impact your life. Now that I do have citizenship, I feel it's my obligation to fight for other non-citizens and immigrants who work in our communities, who serve you your food in restaurants, um, whose children attend these schools, and who are impacted by city politics. And what you do matters. Yes, there is always the risk that people in higher uh, positions of government may deny and overrule your decision. But as a history professor, history will judge you the way that history judges all the institutions that denied women and people of color the right to vote, history will judge you based on the decisions that you make here today. And so while that decision may be overruled, you have within your ability and within your power to push the limits of what is possible and to expand rights for non-citizens. For the concerns around what immigration authorities may do with that information, simply that decision you should do everything within your power to protect that information, but we cannot play the role of white saviors of deciding what is best for non-citizens. These people um, who have crossed thousands of miles uh, to give their children a better future are perfectly capable of making decisions of what risks they're willing to take. Um, so I you know, encourage you to make a right decision um, because students um, and future generations will be looking at the choices that you've made here today. Thank you. Thank you. Gabriella. Can we actually switch to the person who have to change interpretation? Yes. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Lori. 
Hi, my name is Laurie Loisel. I'm a resident of Ward 3. I live on Grant Avenue. Um, I'm also a member of the Northampton Human Rights Commission. And I just wanted to say I think we should be doing everything we can to make it easier for people to vote to, to, and um, that all residents of Northampton should be able to vote. Um, we discussed this at the Northampton Human Rights Commission this last week and everybody uh, agreed that we see it as a human rights issue and we encourage you to include that in the recommendations for the change in the city charter. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gabriella Della Croce. Um, and I live and work in Northampton. I'm uh, employed at the Pioneer Valley Workers Center. Um, and I think it's really important, I'll just be brief in my comments for you to approve the changes in particular in relation to undocumented folks. Um, like others have said, they live and work in our communities, they send kids to our schools, they don't have a voice in local government, and I think it's something that we can do. It's pretty hard, as others have said, to pass reforms at the state level and at the federal level, but I think that we have to start where we're at, and that's at the city level, and we, I think it's really important that you all consider that and also include um, younger, you know, where people are capable of driving a car at 16, I don't think there's any reason they shouldn't be able to, to vote um, and to take a part in their city government, and I think that's a great age for people to start doing that. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Alondra? Buenas noches. Mi um, nombre es Alondra y estoy acá para pedirles que si pueden analizar la decisión. Um, uh, good evening. My name is Alondra. I'm here to ask you to please analyze the decision. En Northampton y en los alrededores hay muchos niños y madres y padres que trabajan. Uh, al igual que todas las personas que viven acá legalmente. In Northampton and the surrounding areas, there are many um, mothers and fathers who work here, just like everyone else who um, resides here legally. Son muchos los niños que, comien que van para el futuro y les pido que nos den una oportunidad, no como inmigrantes, sino que como personas que somos, para un Mil cabezas piensa mejor que una para un cambio y el hecho de ser inmigrantes no significa que eh, no somos eh, personas y tratamos de ser lo mejor, trabajar y apoyar en lo que podemos. There are lots of kids in this area who represent our future. We want you to give us a chance, um, not as immigrants, but as people. Um, a thousand heads put together are better than one. Um, us immigrants, we are people too, and we're trying to uh, live our best lives. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Penny? Penny Geis, I live in Leeds, and as most of you are aware, Leeds only had a preliminary election because we had three candidates for city council and in my opinion that whole exercise was an argument for ranked choice voting I thank you for putting that in the in your proposal it was it seemed like a huge waste of time to have of money to have that extra election there as well as a waste of time for people to come in and vote and I really appreciate that you have taken that lesson and put it in your proposal. Thank you. Finley? Hello. Um, my name is Finley Janes. I'm an elementary school educator in this community. Um, I love this community. I've lived here for over 10 years. And um, when I say the word community, I wanted to let everyone know that I'm referring to our entire community. 
and that means um, no matter their status. So that means both citizen parts of our community as well as non-citizens. Um, the part of our community that can't vote, that aren't allowed to vote, they are our friends. Um, those are our loved ones. They are our neighbors. They are our comrades. Um, they are our coworkers and our colleagues. They are people that are consistently showing up for our community, giving to our community, caring and contributing to our community. They feed our community. They run our community, um, fix our community. They're there for all of us consistently. And they do all this without a voice, without representation, every day. Um, and you know, we should know, we should all know by now that the path to citizenship is a myth. It's a total myth. And so these people are part of our community. They have been and will be for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, for 20 years, contributing to our community, being part of our community, and all of this without a voice, without, a re without representation. Um, and it's uh, devastating. It's completely devastating. It devastates me every single day. Um, it ruins lives, you know, really, for, for people to be in a space, to call a space their home, but they're not considered worthy enough to be able to even put their voice in and have it count. Um, and it's, yeah, it's devastating and it's disgusting and it's racist. Um, and, you know, racist policies have been um, affecting immigrant communities on a federal and state and local level for, for you know, for, for a very long time. And I would be proud if our community um, took an anti-racist stand and stood up and, and um, alongside our non-citizen comrades and our community members and let everyone know that they are part of our community and a very valid and important part of community and they deserve a voice. Um, and to respond to the first speaker today, I don't think that there's anything more important than ensuring equality for all of the residents of the city and this town. I don't think that there's anything more important than letting everyone know that everyone in a space is valuable. Um, and also letting everyone in this community and the state and on a federal level know that like we don't, we're anti-racist. We are anti-racist. We don't agree with any policies that hold down people because of who they are. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rose. Hey everyone, um, Rose Bookbinder. I work at the Pioneer Valley Worker Center and here in Northampton, um, and I grew up here in Northampton, and I'm excited um, at the, a lot of the recommendations that you all are making. I think it's so important, and I know as we've done work across the state, folks do look at Northampton as an example of things that they can do in their cities and towns. Uh, and so all, all of the proposals that you've spoken about, I feel excited about. I'm especially excited here today to support the non-citizens right to vote in city elections um, and I think you know we are part of a, a statewide movement that supports immigrant and workers rights and we will stand with you to continue to push the legislature to, act, the legislature to actually move this forward um, and have a great coalition right now that are supporting a lot of issues at the state level and we're willing to take that risk with you and figure out how, how we can move it along so thank you. Thank you. Cecilia. Hi, my name is Cecilia Prado and I work as a research assistant at Amherst College. Um, I have lived in Northampton for over eight years uh, from the day I turned 20 to this day. Um, this town has seen me become the person that I am today. It has given me a lot and for that I'm very grateful. Northampton's coffee shop supported me through college, and its bar supported me through two heartbreaks. <laughs> <laughs> I bought eight years worth of Christmas presents at Northampton's shops and celebrated eight years of milestones at Northampton's restaurants and venues. 
By all standards, I am a Northamptoner. And as a Northamptoner, what happens here affect me. Uh, I was here, for example, when the business improvement district was shut down, and also during that Christmas where there were like no Christmas lights as a consequence of that. Yeah. Um, throughout these eight years, I've been an active member of this community. I've spoken in front of city council to report unsafe conditions at some of its venues. Um, I've volunteered at the Pioneer Valley Worker Center to build power among um, these communities working class. Um, I joined the board of directors of the Greater Northampton Chamber of Commerce, uh, hoping to improve the conditions of the business sector and its relationship to its community. Um, I live in this town and I know it well and I care about it, just like my fellow immigrants living here. However, unlike our neighbors, we don't get to choose our public servants. It is a, fr a frustrating situation to be in, and I am here because you can at least help us to take steps towards changing it. You can send a message to the state and tell them that you support a vision for a, what a true democracy could be like. One where all the members of the community can participate in its civic process. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Amy. Amy Bookbinder, I've lived and worked in our city for many years, and I'm here to support your good ideas about how to get people more engaged civically by your proposals for voting rights. Um, so thank you. Um, I'm going to run through these quickly. First, I hope ranked choice voting is recommended and approved. And secondly, I don't want to date myself, but I will to make a point. Uh, the first election that I was involved in, and it was before I could vote, was the election of um, Estes Kefauver and Adlai Stevenson. And that was because my family invited me to join them in their efforts in that campaign. And I've voted ever since and remained as involved as I could. And I've heard many city councilors and public officials for years talk about and encourage involvement and engagement by our citizens. And voting is certainly one way to do that. So. I really thank you for your efforts in, in that direction. And lastly, I want to encourage you to recommend what's been requested by the immigrant community and the, their allies, and that's making it possible for our undocumented residents to vote. This is very important to me. We live in a sanctuary city with a strengthened a uh, set of policies for that being worked on currently by our city council through a, its new ordinance. A new campaign has recently been launched in Northampton to support driver's licenses for all. And um, local businesses are signing up more and more daily in support of that. So I hope your committee will join these good efforts to support immigrant rights by recommending voting rights to non-citizens, to non-citizen residents here in Northampton and throughout the state. And whether or not the state approves, you know, is not the point. I, I think that we can be a model of what should happen. So again, thank you very much for your work. Thank you. Uh, Christina. Just gonna let 
Andre, I got ready. Ready? Yeah. Um, my name is Christina Ruggiero Corliss. I live in Florence right now, and I've lived in Northampton for my whole life, next to Robbie. Um, I'm here today um, to speak in favor of um, recommending that um, non citizens be able to vote in city elections in Northampton. Um, a lot of people have already spoken about this really eloquently, um, and I think it's pretty simple, so I'll say not very much, but people that live here should be able to take part in decisions that affect what it's like to live here, um, and it shouldn't, and it doesn't matter if you're a citizen or not. If you live here, you should have a voice in determining um, how things go in this town, and um, yeah, I think that Northampton should absolutely be one of the places pushing the edges of what is possible. Um, so, yeah, that's all, really. Thank you. Wendy? I'm Wendy Parrish. I'm in Ward 4, and I have the best kind of speech. Short, ranked choice voting, I'm for it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That, that was very concise. Jose, uh, Jose Manuel? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I just want to say um, the immigrants, um, in Northampton to let undocumented vote is good because um, like every mom and father and have a children and they go into school and they buying, they renting, they working. So like a human being have a right to vote. It's a good idea and I think like together you guys can do different and and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's the list of people who signed up. Now, are there any others who, yes, yes. Um, I, I saw uh, the woman in the back first. That's you, Rachel. That's you. Oh, Rachel, sorry, Rachel. The kids had a little tantrum. Hi, I'm Rachel Mayori. I'm a candidate for city council in Ward 7. I'm also on the Human Rights Commission. Um, yeah, I really want to just weigh in because I think civic engagement is so critical to a healthy democracy, and I first really want to applaud your work here. Um, it's great that you've approved the mo these motions, um, the, uh, lowering the voting age to 16, uh, ranked choice voting, uh, mailing ballots. Uh, this is real forward thinking. Thank you. And I would like you to consider giving the right to vote to non-citizens. Um, the path to citizenship, as it's been said, you know, it's cir circuitous at best. It's um, and immigrant rights are atta under attack in so many ways these days. Um, and constitutionally, the states do have the right to allow non-citizen voting. Um, up until um, 1926, immigrants voted in 40 states and in some federal elections. And the rescinding of those rights had everything to do with the popular movements at the time. Um, and they were part of a broader campaign to, to, of, of voter suppression of certain voices. Um, establishing non-citizen um, voting will be an investment, and it's a sound investment. Um, it will uh, create the powerful symbolism of, of truly saying we are here for all of our residents and they all have a stake in our city. And I think that would lead to um, really painting us as a welcoming city and encouraging new uh, residents to want to settle here. We need them. It would increase our tax base, improve our local pool of talent, enrich our schools, um, and um, you know, really help our local economy. I thought this was really interesting. San Francisco, uh, has, you know, has finding after they gave um, non-citizens the right to vote in school boards that a, a kind of happy benefit to the process of doing that, uh, 
making that voting change is they have really strengthened their general outreach infrastructure to traditionally hard to reach um, underrepresented groups. And they are going to use this infrastructure uh, with the census. Now they have improved it, they have the language materials, and they feel like it's gonna really help them with the census in terms of getting a more accurate count because who's, who's usually undercounted in the census? Children, immigrants, and um, non-English uh, language speakers. So they're probably gonna get fairer federal funding and better political representation. Um, I think all of these provisions I've named, you know, they, they help meet the Charter Review Committee's stated goal to better engage underrepresented um, communities and to, to re-energize our uh, democracy. So, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, my name is Lois Ahrens. I live in Ward 1. Um, I was just thinking as I was listening that the focus of the this um, uh, non-citizen discussion is about undocumented people, and I totally support undocumented people being able to, to vote here. But I was also thinking that there are many, many people who live in Northampton who aren't citizens, who work at all the colleges, who work at hospitals, who who haven't become citizens, have green cards, are in the process of applying for citizenship, and are also cut out of this, these votes. And I think <clears throat> integrating this, all of these different pools of people not only will expand, of course, the voting base, but it will also, I think, encourage people to be other kinds of participants, like participants in you know, things like this or on committees where people are boards, where people are looking for greater representation, more diversity. So I think when we're thinking about this, we need to think about non-citizens and how many of those people are um, living in Northampton that are, are frozen out of um, participation, direct participation in city government. So I support this and I just encourage us to think about this in the biggest possible way and its benefit to people here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sarah Field. I live on Elizabeth Street in Ward 3. Um, and I agree with many of the comments that have already been stated. I'm in support of ranked choice voting. And I specifically wanted to address <laughs> what many people are touching on, which is um, expanding the voting population to include people um, 16 and older and to include undocumented people um, and uh, other people who are not citizens. Um, Deanna touched on this in her remarks, but I wanted to just really emphasize that the history of democracy in this country, this country was not founded with a democracy where everyone, all of the people on this land were allowed to vote. And the history of the development of democracy throughout the last many hundreds of years has been about expanding who are the people in this land that's supposed to be of the people, by the people, and for the people. And we are at a critical moment in actually really playing an important role in that history. It has taken battles, it has taken people fighting for that expansion of who is included in, in the populace, right? So I think that's just really important to consider. And I also wanted to address the remarks that were made at the very, very beginning of um, this session about the state potentially pushing back on this, I think that is not an adequate reason to not actually make a decision that reflects the values of this community, to not ask for what we want. Of course, we will never get um, access to vote for people who are not citizens if we don't ask for it, but there's a chance that if we actually push for that and put it in the charter and make that demand and um, join with other communities that are doing the same, that we might get that. I don't think that preemptively like expecting a rejection is a reason to ever not try something. So that's Thank you. Uh, yes, ba uh, yes. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Ronnie Gold. I'm a resident of Ward 3, and um, I'm also a candidate for at-large school committee, and I thank you for the invitation to come. Um, and I want to talk about one of the recommendations that was on the list, which was um, how to, or one of, sorry, one of the considerations was how to encourage, support, increase 
diversity among elected city officials. Uh, this is my first time running for a city position, and something I've learned is how challenging it is and how hard it is, not just um, time-wise, but and not just financial-wise, which are two big ones, but also just access to information and how the whole system works. Um, and I think that, I don't know if the charter is the place for it, but I would love to see our city do some things to neutralize campaigning in the sense that everybody has access to the same procedures and it's not about whether or not you know somebody who's run a campaign before, but you've been given the information about what the steps are, what are some policies, or what are some procedures, how to set up a team. There's a lot of information that I think prohibits diversity because of access to the information on campaigning. Um, in a dreamland, I think that we would provide um, equal exposure to all our candidates, and in, I know it's, I doubt it's legislatively possible, but um, some way to have candidates at least in our small community, agree to um, a playing field of what we're going to be doing, of whether it's signage or um, how you're going to expose yourself. I don't want to limit what people's rights are to campaign for themselves necessarily, but at least we could set a minimum of access. And I think that could do a lot to encourage some more diversity. If people didn't think that they were going up against folks who might know more about the system than others do, that could bring more people in and, and create uh, more access for people. And so um, possibly and, and likely not part of this year's charter, but maybe something down the line in the next five-year one to consider uh, ways to bring some more equity into access to campaigning. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. I'm Karen Foster. I'm a resident of Ward 2, and like a couple of the other folks, I'm running for city council in Ward 2 as well. And I just wanted to thank you. I, I read your report. It's a lot of, or the draft. It's a lot of work. Um, I know you've put a lot of time and thought and energy into it. And I'm just really excited by the opportunity that we have in front of us to increase participation in municipal government. Um, you know, and sort of one hand, I often hear you know, rumblings that we wish people were more involved. And then here we are with this opportunity to increase opportunities for people to be involved. And we have 16 and 17 year olds asking for the right to vote. We have residents, integral members of our community who are not citizens, whether they're documented or undocumented, asking for the opportunity to be involved and the opportunity to vote. And it starts small, maybe it starts with a vote. And then as I heard, um, joining a board or a commission, getting involved, coming to meetings. But it starts with us opening up, up the process to as many people as possible. So thank you for that work. And, and I encourage you with, with the decisions you're making, really to think about who can we bring into the process and how can we be as inclusive as possible to, to help our city move forward. Thank you. Is there, is there anyone else who hasn't spoken who, who wants to? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for everyone who spoke. Uh, it was uh, it was very useful for us to hear all your voices. I've got my technician here uh, yeah. working on the mic. Thanks, Bill. All right. Uh, our next item on the agenda is uh, further discussion and a vote on a possible recommendation to extend voting rights in municipal elections to non-citizens. Uh, for purposes of discussion, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion. I'll give the mic to um, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for your great comments. Um, so, uh, to members of the commission, I, I am very much in favor of extending the right to vote to non-citizens, immigrant residents in our community in municipal elections. And one of the uh, early speakers who was talking about history earlier made me think a little bit about how historically, first of all, the Constitution doesn't say non-citizens, you know, people can't vote. It, what happened for many years is that people couldn't vote if they were people of color, if they were enslaved, 
Um, even after they were freed, they still couldn't vote. There was a movement against them. You couldn't vote if you were a woman. You couldn't vote if you didn't own property. And then even in the turn of the century into the 1900s, there were huge movements to prevent Irish from voting, Italians from voting. You know, we've been going through um, recent um, huge propaganda campaigns around people uh, being involved in voting fraud, all, most of which was all untrue. Um, so historically, we've seen constant suppression of the ability of people in our communities to participate um, in everyday affairs. And personally, to me, I want uh, everyone in my community who, as people said, live and work here participate, to participate in voting. People whose kids go to school should have a voice in who their city councilor is. And I, I did look up some communities, many, many communities have looked at this. Not all have, have uh, come to a conclusion or made a decision. Many in Massachusetts. Um, Maryland apparently is a state that has multiple communities that um, permit and allow um, immigrants to vote in their communities and they're all the better for it. Um, and I guess, you know, really philosophically, it it's, seems that um, it's a logical step to correct injustice. It means we've spent months talking about how to reach out to communities who aren't represented on this commission, and it was a kind of a struggle for us in many ways. And here we've just talked about um, how to extend a democratic right that all of us enjoy to others who live with us, and we have the biggest room full of people we've seen in a year. So I, I understand that there are potential complications around moving our entire agenda through all the next steps um, to the legislature. Uh, however, I think the time has come to begin addressing the, the great injustices that we see in our community every day. And I, I'm willing to go with that. I'm willing to talk to my legislators and and um, you know, move on this in ways that I might not have thought of before I started this commission. So that's my opinion. Uh, first, I want to address uh, the first speaker, Mr. Warner's comments this, uh, this evening. What time is it? Um, it's not an all or nothing proposition. We don't send this off and the legislature looks at it and goes, oh, there's one thing we don't like in here. We scotch the whole thing. Good luck to you all. Thanks for asking. That's not how it works. They may pick and choose. They could cherry pick. They could vote the whole package. We don't know. And I and I think actually to a number of other people's comments here that not asking is worse. You know, we've all heard silence is complicity. As silence is seeding a point that we don't agree with. Um, I think it's, I, I'm, I disagree with his thoughts on that. And I don't, I don't think it was born out of a bias. I think he was being, in his mind, pragmatic. But this is, first of all, this is pragmatic. It is, as Patty has said, and as all of you have said, so much more eloquently than I'm gonna stumble through. But the fact is that if we're going to subscribe to this naive notion of democracy and representation and what it means to be a community, so far it, it just manifests lip service. It's not um, some people can vote, some people can't. People who actually, I, we've been saying all along that anyone who wants to vote, who asks for the right to participate in manifesting their governance should be able to vote. If you, if you I mean, you know, I've, I've been advancing the 16 year old vote now for, well, most, since we started, all the people I was working with are now 21. But, the, and this is a slow process, but the argument that we always heard against these things, or one people were not, they weren't sophisticated enough, they weren't in, involved in the community, which is sort of a, a a very roundabout way of saying that they weren't uh, community members like I am. And 
first of all, you're not to qualify for voting. I just turned 18. That's it. I didn't do anything else. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't take a test. I wasn't especially good looking. I didn't have, I wasn't heavily invested in anything. I just turned 18. They said I could vote. When we went on uh, the WGBY about a year ago with a member of the Youth Commissioner, the, the woman asking the questions said, why do you think these kids deserve the privilege of a vote? And I said, well, excuse me, it's not a privilege. It's a right. Driving's a privilege. If, you know, if I don't qualify for a driver's license, I can't get one. Voting is a right. It is, it is literally, we keep describing it as the fundamental block of democracy and governance. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that, that uh, we have what we can call a very representative democracy anywhere in this country, and I would say that also applies here. But to aspire, for, uh, aspire to it, to work towards it, and to ask for the right to expand voter rights in this city is a good and moral obligation. So um, I don't think it's a particularly bad idea for us to, I, I, I wouldn't take the first uh, person's recommendations as far as uh, excising some of the elements we've already supported. And also to this point about voter rights for immigrants, I'm actually, I, th I honestly, it really just conforms and comports with everything that we've already discussed. And, um, you know, we've had the debate already, oddly enough, we just haven't formed it as a voting item. So should it come to that point, I'm in favor. Um, I agree with what's been said already. Um, to talk, to talk about what the first uh, public comment was about, just to give a little bit more context to that, um, I work for a state legislator and we've been looking into the process of changing a charter for a municipality. And we learned there's no one way to do it. There are several different ways to do it where the municipality actually gets a big say in how it goes forward. Um, so I, I don't think that that is a reason to not put it forward. Um, on that same note, having conversations like these, whether or not they go through or not, are really important to have, especially at a, a bigger, a higher level, like the state. So even if this doesn't go through, I think it's absolutely worth asking for and asking people to discuss it and, and have legislators really talk about why they would or would, or would not support it and hold them accountable. Um, so I do support this. I agree with Bill um, and a lot of other committee members that this goes in line with a lot of what we've been doing this year to expand the electorate um, and increase participation. Hi, I'm, I'm Robbie Sullivan. I want to thank everyone who got up and spoke. And I had three things that I wanted to touch on, Bill and Patty hit two of them. The other one that really struck with me, um, and I believe Rose said this, or actually Amy, um, and that is, you know, when we're talking about non-citizens having the right to vote or the right to um, pursue driver's licenses, so the immediate reaction is, well, okay, but how can we protect them once their information is out there? Um, can we protect them? And I really appreciated hearing um, that our job is not to play the role of white savior, um, that these people can do their own risk assessments and decide what is most important to them and the risks that they're willing to take. And that really um, hit home for me. So it's good to hear. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I, I agree with Patty as far as history, you know, we just, we just need to keep pushing the envelope. That's what has been done and what will always need to be done and Northampton is a leader. Lived here my whole life, proud of it, want to continue to be proud of it. Um, and um, 
Yeah, it, it's been said, but I wanted to echo what, what Bill and, um, and um, Sam said that it's, it's not a package deal. It, this is all about groundswell and pushing the limits and we can, we can recommend whatever we want. Um, and it's, it has to start somewhere, so um, I'd like it to start here. Hi, I'm Bob Bolrus. Um, I just like to put a, a numerical context to a lot of the efforts that we all are engaged here in. Um, in an era when 30% turnout among registered voters is continue, considered to be a groundswell, I think the committee has recognized from the get-go that anything we can do to encourage greater participation by candidates and voters is something that we ought to be about. And so that has really underscored uh, most of the recommendations that we're putting forward this year. Ranked choice voting is an initiative that's been around for quite a while, at least a decade. As we speak now, bills are being considered next week by the legislature, and voter choice mass is in the process of rounding up 60,000 initiative petitions to, pretend, uh, to present to the legislature. This is an idea whose time has come. I would suggest that 16-year-old voting and immigrant rights voting is also an idea whose time has come, and anything we can do to make that idea grow is what we ought to be doing. Thank you. Anybody else on the committee? Uh, so we have a motion, but the motion is actually the to open up for discussion. I would actually like to make a motion <clears throat> to include language in our recommendations. Oops, sorry. I'd like to make a motion to recommend uh, extension of voting rights to all non-citizens of uh, qualifying age. <laughs> And I'm sorry, yeah, it's a good point, in municipal elections. Okay, um, does anyone else on the committee who has not spoken uh, want to address this specific motion? Uh, this is an important uh, vote for us. Uh, Northampton uh, is a community that has uh, been on the cutting edge, uh, been perhaps beyond the cutting edge in terms of leadership on issues of uh, equity, inclusiveness, access. This follows, uh, a, you know, a, a long pattern in this community. Northampton's been a sanctuary city since 2014. Uh, this is another way that we can uh, uh, we can encourage and, and give power to all uh, community members who, who live and work and contribute to this community. And I think, if, as several people have mentioned, I think it will go beyond simple voting rights. I think that it will open doors for participation and greater diversity. And it's, it's, a, a, it's one way that a local community can send, I think, a very powerful message at a time when, uh, at the federal level, there are such divisive and, and uh, hateful policies. So I uh, urge all of us to vote yes for the motion. Any further discussion? Let's vote. Call the question. Okay, Annie, call the roll, please. Molly Fox. 100%. Patty Healy. Yes. Dylan Gaffney. Yes. Comfort Dwight. Yes. Sam Hopper. Yes. Dan Moulton. Yes. Lynn Simmons. Yes. Robbie Sullivan. Yes. Bob Warren. Yes. That's unanimous. Okay, we have we have a couple other items on the agenda. You're all welcome to, to stay, uh, but if you want to leave, I, I understand. Um, all right, the next item is uh, to discuss further 
and vote on the letter to the mayor regarding access to information. Uh, you have the latest revised version of that letter, which addressed uh, concerns that we discussed October 15th uh, that were, uh, <clears throat> uh, we, we deleted from the letter the reference to, uh, 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 to one or two citizens' requests for an, uh, an old-fashioned uh, annual report. And I think we also, I, uh, and Lynn, you, you had raised uh, some questions about this. We, we uh, tweaked the section on uh, creating an information nexus on the city website. Those are the, the two changes in the, in the letter since we last discussed it. Discussion? Okay, is there, uh, well, we, we, we voted, uh, we have voted already to send this letter to the mayor. So I think what we're, we're voting now is uh, to approve the final okay. wording. I, I move uh, this iteration of the letter to be forwarded to the mayor. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? Uh, I think we'll take a roll call on this, even though it's not a, a, a specific recommendation in the, in the report. So, Annie? Molly Fox? Yes. Patty Healy? Yes. Uh, Dylan Gaffney? Yes. Thomas Dwight? Yes. Sam Hopper? Yes. Dan Moulton? Yes. Lynn Simmons? Abstain. Robbie Sullivan? Yes. Bob Boris? Yes. Okay, so that's... Uh, uh, eight in favor and one abstention. Okay. Um, uh, does the committee have a? Uh, yes, you're right. I'll go back to that. Thanks. Uh, does the committee have a sense of whether we want to wait until we've uh, issued our our the re our report for this letter this is this is actually in addition to the report or shall we send this letter immediately to the mayor I, I thought it was going to be included with the rest okay that's fine okay all right uh, Lynn has pointed out that we skipped item updates from committee members for anything that's not on the agenda tonight does anybody have anything okay then our last item tonight is um, City Council President Ryan O'Donnell uh, contacted me after our last meeting and asked uh, if we would consider including in the charter uh, an ordinance that was passed in 2016, uh, the language of which is you have on the agenda. Essentially, it prohibits uh, water resources and infrastructure uh, from being privatized. Uh, 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 Council O'Donnell was unable to be here tonight. He and I spoke briefly about this. He is modeling his request on the town of Gloucester, which also passed a similar ordinance and then embedded it in the charter, uh, feeling that it's, but because water is a public utility that, um, uh, that it, is a stronger measure to include it in the charter than simply to have it as an ordinance. So um, is there a motion on this for discussion purposes? I, I would move for purposes of discussion. Oh. Second. Okay, discussion. Bill. So um, this was voted uh, unanimously in the council, I believe. I'm sure someone will tell me different if I'm wrong, but. Um, the con it was actually out of a genuine concern a number of other communities that uh, the city of Atlanta being one uh, really glaring example that ceded their water resources to a private company in order to manage their water system so that the city wouldn't have to be burdened with it. And 
as a result, there were not only water shortages, but literally whole development complexes which couldn't be built because at the time, the private company couldn't keep a pace. And at the same time, the community lost all control of, as Stan identified, this one municipal resource. We don't actually have a lot of things that are identified as municipal resources, but water being the very essence of life itself is a sacrament and worth protecting, particularly from private interests. Now, no one's come sniffing around the fact, no one's come to my knowledge, Northampton in pursuit of trying to secure our water supply. But for instance, Nestle, which brings you bottled water, Poland Springs, has taken over a number of municipal water resources in Maine. That they get to bottle it first before the citizens even get a taste of their own water that used to be theirs. So this was not, there was no imminent threat, but the fact that this is, there are trends in this direction, it's in our water was not protected by law. It was, it was just taken for granted. We created this ordinance to do just that. And Councilor O'Donnell has shared with me, and, and I do not disagree with him, that this actually would actually probably reach the level of um, magnitude that would qualify uh, to be in the charter. It's unique in that respect because, as I said, we're not, we don't have municipal electricity. We don't have municipal, uh, uh, well, Wi-Fi for that matter at this point, but that's being discussed. But in this instance, we, because without the water, we literally would be dead. Now, of course, we also have another problem, which is too much water, but not potable water. It tends to fill up our streets and we're in, uh, with climate change becoming a floodplain. But I think that, I think uh, Councilor O'Donnell makes a cogent and correct case, but um, I'm hoping that he will have an opportunity at the next meeting to make a more eloquent case and make a better case for it than because he was, he's the one who was actually truly inspired with this. I co-sponsored this ordinance, I believe, but um, I would love to hear from Ryan when, when and if he gets a chance, at the very least in a memo of some sort. Other discussion? Bob. I'd really like to hear more on this. I mean, it's in an ordinance already. I don't know why we need to go further than that. There's technology involved here, there's management involved here, and there's you know, what could happen in the future that we would be constrained potentially if we made it a charter item rather than allowing it to remain as an ordinance that the council and the mayor could debate as things may or may not change down the road. So I'd like to hear more. Um, actually, I, I did forget to mention uh, what Council O'Donnell is also proposing is, and I think this is also based on the Gloucester Charter item, is that this could be overturned, the language indicating it could be overturned by citizens' referendum. Um, the, the reason is it's just a higher order of things, as you noted, Bob, and that it would make it that much more difficult, but at the same time would not make it impossible. Yeah, I'd love to have Ryan come and talk about it. And I think, it, and I, I would be very much in favor of putting this in the charter. I think this is a global issue and there have been many places in the world, including the United States, where the right to water has been whisked away from communities. And I mean, we're not, I don't think we're facing the same problems that Flint, Michigan had, but I think that the fact that privatization of water has become a, a global you know, a, a really a very big global problem. And there there will be wars over water um, if they haven't been already. Certainly there have been in Bolivia and there have been with uh, indigenous peoples and um, uh, corporate Big Aggie in uh, the southwest of the country. And some of that is because of the 
people didn't foresee the future about um, the how the right to water um, would sort of disappear. Oh, it went on. Oh, it went on. <laughs> the battery saying. Oh. So, so I, I, considering we will talk about it again, I won't go on. But I, I think it's, I think it's a, a very good um, uh, thing to talk about in the future. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Any other committee members? Uh, so I've heard three people say they'd like to hear more from Ryan about this. Is there a motion to table this? I move to table it. Okay. Those in favor of tabling? Aye. 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 Okay. So uh, our next meeting is November. Our next meeting is November nineteenth. Uh, I told Ryan uh, that that would be uh, the, the time for him to come and address us if if the committee wished that, so he's aware of that, I will, um, I will remind him of that. If he can't be here in person, I'll at least ask him to submit uh, some kind of a memo uh, addressing. B Bob, your concern was particularly about why the need to move beyond an ordinance, right? Oh, uh, that's one issue, yeah. And the other issue would be the word manage that's in that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I come from a place where it's it's sometimes the case where governments have have to turn over the management of major capital intensive industries to people who can do it cheaper. There's lots of risks in that, as we've recently seen. But I hate I would hate to see that opportunity precluded uh, if it doesn't have to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yes, that was my question, Bob. What, wh where are you referring to the term managed? Such resources and infrastructure should not be sold, leased, or transferred into private ownership or control. So I guess I thought I saw managed, but maybe it's control. C control would be your concern. Okay. Okay, we will, uh, we will ask Councillor O'Donnell to address those points, I hope, in person here on November 19th. We're not here, we won't be at Jackson Street, we'll be back in the hearing room. <clears throat> Is there any other business tonight? Move to adjourn. Oh, okay, just a reminder that we're not meeting, uh, I'm sorry, sorry Sam. <laughs> A reminder that we're not meeting next Tuesday, which is election day, we'll be voting. Um, so our next meeting is in fact 6.30, November 19th, in the hearing room. I second the motion to adjourn. Okay, those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We're adjourned, thank you. <laughs>